Hey everybody, and a welcome to another Let's Play video. Today we are actually taking a look at one of the two Civil War games that was produced by the History Channel. This is the US Civil War Secret Missions. Now as always, if you have any recommendations or suggestions for games that you want to see me play, let me know in the comments down below. And as always, please go and check out my Along Play channel, The Game Archivist. You can find the link to that channel in the description down below. And if you like what you see, please subscribe to The Game Archivist channel. It really helps me out a lot and I would be really, really grateful if you did. It really helps uh, this channel out a lot as well, so please head on over there. Again, The Game Archivist. You can find the link in description down below. Now without further ado, please enjoy this epic journey of this rare and forgotten game. Under the command of General Hooker, a Union army of 130,000 men crossed the Rappahannock River on April 27, 1863. They advanced upon the Confederates led by Robert E. Lee. Lee's army numbered less than half as many men as Hooker's and were not nearly as well supplied or well rested. But one of Lee's commanders, Jeb Stuart, received word from one of his scouts that there was a weakness in the Union's right wing. With reinforcements failing to arrive in time and the enemy starting to encircle him, Lee made a bold and risky decision. Lee ordered one of his most daring generals, Stonewall Jackson, to strike out at dawn with his troops. Under the cover of the wilderness, they would march for 12 miles and strike a sudden and decisive blow against the Union's vulnerable right flank. Over here! They're coming my way! Wake up, soldier. Take your position. Get ready, man. Wait until they're closer. Don't waste ammo we don't got. One shot, one hit! One shot, one hit! One shot, one hit. All right, guys, let's see if we can do that. Oh, already lost that guy. Welcome to... Civil War Secret Missions, the last single player and arguably the best game produced by the History Channel. I'm curious who of you actually played this game. Let me know in the comments down below. Let's actually go to the second floor. Might have a better angle there. But yeah, gameplay wise, uh, this might actually be my favorite of the one that they uh, produced. Uh, it is the least realistic, though. As we play this, we'll talk a little bit about why. Let's see if some explosives can do some damage here. These two might actually be in range. Yep. Oh, they're sending in a lot of units. So we start this campaign fighting us the rebels. And halfway through we will switch to the Union side. So we get to see the war from both perspectives. Which I think is cool. Alright. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. What's all this? A real mess you made here, Lieutenant. Yes, sir. I sent you on a scouting expedition, soldier. I didn't expect you to draw the attention of the entire army of the Potomac. No, sir. I take full responsibility, sir. So why do I find you barricaded in this church with a pile of Union corpses around it? Sorry, sir. I just want to make sure there are no Yanks around the church before heading to the furnace. I see you found a few, didn't you? Afraid so, sir. And you don't seem to be too unhappy about it either. No, sir. We're Rangers. We ain't afraid of a few Yankees. Well done, Lieutenant. Continue your mission. Check the furnace for enemy troops and the possibility of supplies. Oh, and Lieutenant? Yes, sir? Next time when you engage the enemy, try and leave more for us. Huh. Will do, sir. <laughs> you heard the General. We head out in five minutes. Get ready. All right, here we go. Let's actually get some more explosives. Oops. Oh, they have a sniper? Well, we'll keep it like this. All right, let's move out. So one of the reasons why actually this game is a little bit less realistic. Uh, so the this is their second um, 
Civil War game that they made. And the first one is quite realistic, though it still has errors. But the weaponry that you use are a lot of the rifles which require the long reload time. Um, that made the gameplay quite slow. And that was not to some people's liking. Even though the purists, of course, did. But because of that, they made sure to bring a lot more repeaters uh, in this campaign. And because of that, the gameplay in Secret Missions is a lot more fast-paced, but because of that, also a little bit less realistic. Not that the weapons that they use are not real, but they were very rare. And playing this make it seem like everybody owned these types of weapons. Come on, show your ugly face. There we go. Alright. I saw a little ammo thing for more explosives. As you can see, the explosives are very effective here. Maybe even more so than the uh, Pacific uh, War one. And I actually just have a lot of respect for this game. Like I said, I think gameplay-wise, it's the uh, best. It's quite varied. Look at this. This is a nice view. It looks very nice, too. I think this is their newest one, so... It looks very beautiful. Um, but yeah, man. Uh, the viewer, or viewer line uh, 24, gave a great request for a game or suggestion called La uh, Land of War The Beginning. It's a World War II game, a first person shooter, single player campaign, but it takes place in 1939 and you play as the Polish. And I just really have a weakness for these uh, shooter campaigns where you have these settings that are just not explored a lot. And done in a realistic, respectful way. You know, not like EA or uh, Activision. And this game is actually made by Activision back in the day. There we go. But, um, you know, again, Call of Duty Vanguard is so stupid, but also Battlefield 5. You know, I hate when they say, oh, we want to explore the battles that haven't really been shown. And instead of, like, showing proper, you know, Polish side or... Uh, the Greek battles or whatever, they, they go like, oh yeah, there was also a battle in Norway, which there was. But instead of actually showing it realistically, it's just like, you know, oh, you're this kid on skis with her mother. And oh, Jesus, I'm getting my ass kicked. This might be a good spot for this thing. So yeah, the sniper is one of the few that has the old school... Or more traditional reloading. I need help. Oh! Give it to that yank. I remember from the Pacific War one that the uh, friendly AI was so effective. So I was wondering how that holds up here. Ooh, well, good hitboxes. That's at least something. But yeah, so if any of you others, uh, other viewers know any good games out there, any uh, shooters or other genres that have these unique settings, you know, hidden gems, let me know. Because again, Land of War in the beginning, it's just available on Steam. Uh, you just have to, you know, wade through all that garbage, you know, all those stupid hentai games or the Squid Game copies or Amongst Us copies. There's just so much garbage on Steam, but if you, you know, if you wade through all that crap, you will find some great games. There we go. Gotcha. And this game is also a bit, you know, a bit finicky, but it's definitely less finicky than uh, the first Civil War game or the Pacific War one. You know, the Pacific War one has a lot of repetition with their levels. This one, not as much. This is almost like a Call of Duty Civil War version. Here we go. Here we got a Yankee camp. 
Let's actually take care of their towers. Uh, how do I... There we go. Let's make the blue boys fly. Aim higher. Trying to hit the uh, tower. You'll know when uh, when I've hit it. It'll go up in flames. That was too high, I think. Oh, there we go. Okay, hit that one. Now the other tower. Oh, that's a grenade if I ever saw one. Bye, guys. Hmm. Oh, they have a lot of reinforcements over there. Let's first take care of those, then head to the cannon and deal with the second tower. Seeing as they are all clustered up, that would also be a great place to throw an explosive, but there's a lot of open ground. You have to uh, trespass for that. Am I also getting hit from the left side? Oh, yeah, I am. Definitely, your friendly AI is not as useful here. They are not killing any of those. <laughs> You can see, though, that the gameplay is a lot slower compared to uh, Pacific War. Like, it can sometimes feel as if, like, enemies are just spawning in, but it's just, you know, you, you kill only one every few seconds. So you gotta be a bit patient. There we go. Let's see what's in this house. An invisible wall. That's what's there. Alright. Time to... Is there someone behind? Oh, there is. Here we go. Boom! Great hit. That didn't take as long as the first tower. Oh, what we got here? We have friendlies. Oh, that doesn't look good. Dear Lord, what happened? I don't know for sure. He's wounded. Someone shot him. He gonna survive? He's gotta survive. We need him. No weapon was more feared during the war than a devious gun created by Dr. Gatling. Named after its northern inventor, the Gatling gun was devised to be so deadly that it would quickly put an end to the great conflict. The weapon was hand cranked with six barrels revolving around a central shaft. Gatling devised the barrels to partially cool the weapon during firing, and more importantly, to kill as many soldiers as possible as the gun was capable of firing 600 rounds per minute. On May 16, 1864, at Cold Harbor in central Virginia, Confederate spies discovered that Union General Winfield Scott had received a dozen Gatling guns. Well aware of the destructive power of the Gatling gun, Confederate soldiers devised a daring plan to capture and destroy the weapons. Man, we have reports the enemy has some sort of new weapon. 
And one of these guns was used in the attack yesterday and was damaged. Now, our intelligence tells us it was moved to a farm nearby for quick repair. You need to capture that weapon and bring it to us. Otherwise, we're going to be badly outgunned. Be on the alert. Enemy troops are crawling all over this area. Good luck, soldier. Thank you, sir. All right. Let's look for this new weapon, this Gatling gun. Looks like it's only me and one rebel soldier. Ah, uh, here we go. We got Yanks. Let's give them a rebel welcome. So we got a very interesting alt weapon here. The Pepper Box Revolver. Doesn't look very powerful. And also not very usable at a great distance. A lot of these soldiers are using the same weapons as we are. Oh, we have an ammo box with some extra uh, where is that thing? Here we go. Oh, come on, uh, rebel. Kick their ass. Well, you weren't very useful, but hey, you did your job. I'm gonna wait for the smoke to settle. We could go around, but it's a bit difficult to pinpoint them. Okay, took care of that one. Oh, oh, he's running. There we go. Pick a cold rifle. Okay, let's actually switch weapons. Oh, what are you shooting at? It's like soldiers at the other side of this river. As long as they stay there, they shouldn't be too much of a threat. Oh my god, I didn't even shoot it. They just spawned there and it exploded. Let's wait for the smoke to settle again. Oh, he just ran right through it. Okay. Watch out! Oh, I see him. Stay close. There we go. Oh, he's gonna make a little tumble and disappear. But yeah, you can see that most of the enemies in our units here are using repeater weapons. Which again, those weapons did, ex did exist, but... You wouldn't see clashes this frequent of people using them. Then again, you can also say, well, you're more of a specialized unit, right? You're not part of the actual grander army. Right? It's like we're rangers. So we get the specialized weapons. But I have to say, you know, the ga it it gameplay-wise, it becomes... Uh, a bit better because of that. Oh, I hear the Gatling gun. There she is. They're reloading it. Okay, took care of one of the gunners. Oh, oh my goodness. Oh, wow. Okay, we are taking losses very fast here. Uh, here. There we go. Beautiful. Alright, let's actually flank around. Man, it's really good. It's Again, there's quite a bit of variety here as well. There's like urban combat, battle out in the open in the field here, 
some turret sections. It really does feel like a Call of Duty experience, uh, you know, in the Civil War era. And I mean that in the good sense. Oh, promote to Pioneer. Or Pioneer. You know, I know that everybody makes fun of Call of Duty nowadays, and like I said, I hate Vanguard um, and some of the more recent entries as well, but Call of Duty used to be very, very good back in the day. Wow, he survived a shot to the face. All right, let's actually uh, test this puppy out. Oh, God. Oh, we got some yanks to test it out on. Oh, we have friendlies. It's a very powerful gun. Not, of course, as uh, powerful as the more modern versions, but hey, you can see why this could be very decisive for some battles. I think there might be one or two left, so let's actually pick them off. Let's use their own weapon against them. Aha. All right, we will report our findings. Capture the gun, gonna use it against their creators. Oh, a lot of open field here, this is dangerous. We got four explosives. Oh. Where are they at? Oh, I see the flashes. Let's quickly head to HQ here. Come on. Ah, a little too early. Oh, that was a great one. Shit. Yeah, okay, I'm out of ammo for that thing. Let's see if they got something I can uh, change with. Another sniper rifle, okay. I guess in the open here, it can be very useful. Uh, open ridge, yep, like this. Ugh, only got one bullet left. Well... That was short-lived, but useful in that way. We can find another ammo box for explosives or whatever. We can gain some ammo for this, but... For now... Let's stick to the Henry. Oh, Jesus! You have something interesting? No. Oh, we got Yanks. Oh my goodness. Okay. Well, that cart does actually provide some useful cover here. I maybe picked up some ammo for that weapon, but doesn't seem like it. There we go. Oh! Look right here. Oh! 
Oh god, they have another Gatling gun. Hold on. This one. Let's see how Oh, they're reloading. Oh, that's their big mistake. That's the one weakness. Okay, I took care of that. I do like that they uh, sidestep quite often, makes them a bit more difficult to hit. Also reminds me kind of of like the earlier Medal of Honor games, where the enemies would quite often do that. Oh, it looks like that actually our encampment. There we go. Hey, boys! Nice to see a friendly face. Ah. There we go. What do you have for me, soldier? All right, let's take you to the general. Private Kanoa reporting for duty, sir. Oh, yeah. The new weapon? I already heard about it. Damn killing machine. Yeah, General Lee's really going to appreciate this new addition to our arsenal. I have a feeling that we're really going to need it. Oh, never mind, soldier. Go get some rest. You deserve it. Dismiss. During the Civil War, small and irregular militia groups were called upon to attack enemy supply lines, perform raids, and generally wreak havoc on opposing armies. One such group was led by John Mosby. He earned his nickname, the Grey Ghost, for his uncanny ability to elude the Union Army time and again. After the successful raid at the Fairfax Courthouse, Mosby set his sights on the reserve picket post near the Alexandria, Loudoun, and Hampshire Railroad in Northern Virginia. This area was a prized target due to its proximity to the Union capital. In federal control, the town was completely taken by surprise when Mosby descended with his rangers, intent on disrupting Union supply lines and capturing enemy troops. Men, we have the explosives. Y'all know what to do. We need to get in there, do our work, then get out. Let's move. All right, let's do it. So what's very cool about this mission, and more missions to come, is that this is urban combat. We're fighting actually in a town, and that is something that the other Civil War game uh, rarely does. Duck! And I love me some urban combat in video games. Don't ask me why, I don't know. But same with World War II games or Modern Warfare games. If it's in a city, I love it. Then again, you could already see in the explanation video where these specialized units. So, for those who want to, you know, take part in the more classic battles, the first Civil War game may be better. And for those wondering, yes, we will also do the other Civil War game on this channel. So, don't you worry about that. Looks like our friendly units are a bit more useful. Come on. Maybe I spoke too soon. Uh, 
actually did damage him. There we go. It does make you wonder, playing this in such a unique setting, not seen in uh, games very much, like what other unique settings we can do. You know, I would love to see a proper World War I single player campaign. Uh, not like Battlefield 1, which I know a lot of people like that campaign. I think it's hit or miss. I think some of the missions are great, some of the other ones uh, are not as great. Oh, I see you. Death by kneecaps. There we go. Alright, we are supposed to... Oh, look at this. This almost looks like a BAR. Destroy that, but... Uh, is anything up here? No. Okay. Setting explosives, running away. Booyah! There we go. You also see now an abilities thing sometimes when there's a checkpoint. So, this character, uh, or because I leveled up in rank, I can uh, apply bonuses each mission, and this one gives me 50% uh, more ammo. Oh, here we go. Alright, I'm gonna flank to the right. That never blew up. There we go. Took it straight to the face. All right, boys, head on forward. But yeah, so like a World War One game would be cool. I was wondering, like, how far can you go back in time and uh, have a cool, you know, um, shooter, like first-person shooter experience? Maybe the Revolutionary War. I also know that Darkest of Days has a World War One one uh, part, but again, it's only partial. Oh, that would be such a great grenade op opportunity. Oh! Oh my goodness. Oh, I see a grenade box over there. Oh no, wait, what is that? This is a grenade box. What is this? Uh, that might be a bonus objective. I think like each level has like a bonus objective. Okay. All right, let's continue. You know the drill, boys. Get to work. <laughs> oh my god! I sent him to a different era. All right, that blew up. Yeah, man, I cannot emphasize enough. This game just plays really well. The action is good. The weapons feel good. Shot him in the back. Not very honorable, but hey. All is fair in love and war. There we go, that's one. 
kind of amazing here. Oh, ammo. Excellent. We have a lot of explosives again. It's just so nice. It's so atmospheric. Oh, got another one of those crates. Like I said, you can see that this is sort of like a B title. But hey, man, it's... like it, As I said before with the other game, I, I would prefer the, to playing this over uh, Call of Duty Vanguard. This has more soul and love in it than that game. I assume you can go here to collect some of the extra stuff. Hmm. Oh, well, I don't really need it. Yeah, you can have a maximum of 10 explosives. So let's actually use quite a few of them. Oh, this looks like a prime opportunity. Christmas came early, boys. New rank. Well, that's a destructive power. No men were more feared by either side of the war than the sharpshooters. These snipers were often low-ranking soldiers, recently off farms, carrying their own rifles. Before the war, they fed their families by shooting game. Now their quarry was human, and the effect they had on the enemy was devastating, killing from well-concealed positions, often reducing the opposing force to outright panic. Not surprisingly, they had a special fondness for officers, easy to spot in their shiny uniforms, often on horseback, making them excellent targets. On the second day of battle at Gettysburg, Union artillery decimates Southern ground troops. Fortunately, Confederate snipers occupy a craggy formation known as Devil's Den. It's critical they provide cover for their men down below by preventing Union artillery from firing. General Lee, I was not expecting- I have an important assignment for you, soldier. The enemy have engaged our 2nd Battalion at Little Round Top. They're outnumbered and running out of ammunition, the outlook isn't good. We're moving artillery into the area to give them relief. I need you to make sure that they succeed. Good luck. Wow, the actual General Lee. Look at that. Alright, got snipers. And we're at Gettysburg, people. Such a famous battle. Oops. That was a terrible shot. So you can see that I actually have a new skill equipped. Because I increased in rank, I got a new one unlocked. This one does uh, more damage. Which, as a sniper, doesn't do a whole lot because I think it's a guaranteed one-hit kill. But with the other weapons, it might be less repetitive. Oh my god. This is quite epic, I have to say. Oh no! Lost another rebel brother. Let's see, kill the enemy snipers. Yeah, okay. That's this objective here. Ah! Oh, he hit me right as I try to kill him. There we go. Booyah! Defend the position. Well, the waypoint is actually telling us to go here. What's my other weapon? Do we have something else? Yeah, we do. Ugh. It's pretty close range. Let's actually use a few grenades. Come on, boys, for the Confederacy. Yee, 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 yee.
There we go. Eliminate the cannon crew. Okay, sounds like another job for the sniper. I still need to reload. So yeah, this gameplay right here with this long reload time, that is closer to what you get in the other Civil War game. I don't remember a whole lot of that other Civil War game. So I am actually also looking forward to playing that again. Oh, that's the cannon crew. Hold on. I am right in the open for them to hit me. Watch out. Oh, there's another grenade box over there. I'm gonna use you as a human shield. Is that okay, brother? One more. Glad you're here. That must be the final one. Going, man. There we go. Kill the artillery crew. All right. One more group coming up. One down. Ugh. Oh, we got them actually here on the ridge. Okay. Put another one. He's at the ridge, or actually in uh, a distance where I could maybe throw a explosive on him. I don't know if those soldiers on the ridge here, if they just spawn indefinitely until I take care of the uh, artillery crew. Still got several cannons with two. Okay, I think I got that one. Let's see if I can actually reach. You know, it's too far. about that cannon on the left they're all clear okay now we probably just need to take care of the units here on the ridge in that case let it rain explosives of course that famous scene from the movie Gettysburg as well where they charge down here with the bayonets doesn't look anything like this though
locomotive power became a decisive resource for both sides of the war. Nothing could move thousands of men and their supplies as efficiently as trains. Both North and South carried out daring attacks to capture or disrupt the enemy's railroad shipments. In 1861, Colonel Thomas Stonewall Jackson discovered that coal was being shipped in large quantities from the Ohio Valley to Union naval bases in Baltimore. That fuel would be used to power Navy warships. Jackson devised a covert plan and ordered the 5th Virginia Infantry to attack the B&O Railroad and capture as many railroad cars and supplies as possible. Men, you did real good work in your last mission, so we got us a new assignment as a reward. There's a locomotive up ahead that's got mechanical problems. We're gonna hijack that train, then move it onto the main station and blow it up entirely, so no more trains can go in or out. How's that sound? We'll make a short stop to send a fake message from its telegraph station. All right? What? Let's do her then. Audio got kind of caught off there, but ooh, okay. Got another schneifer. It's almost like they, uh, with these secret missions, what they try to do, instead of like, you know, telling a story or, or the historic battles, they take elements from the war that are um, kind of remarkable, right? Like the Gatling gun, the snipers, uh, the locomotive in this case. Uh, I can already tell you that the next mission will be with boats. And they, you know, make the missions revolving around that. Which I think is fine. And for those, of course, uh, you know, viewing me for a longer time, they do know I prefer battles that are more epic on an epic scale. Um, but yeah, I don't know. This is just the gameplay is very fun. All right, let them come. For the CSA. And, oh, don't you worry. We will switch to the Union soon enough. And then we will kill Johnny Rebs. There we go. See, but this is what I'm talking about with the variety. You know, one uh, time you're fighting in a, in a town. The next, you're on a Gatling gun. The next one, you're, in a, you're a sniper in the field or in a ship. There's just a lot of variety in this in this game, which is great. You know, I kind of feel sorry that after this, they never really produced another game. Like, sure, they're not brilliant games that the History Channel produced, but they're not hot garbage either, in my opinion. Oh, there's something there. Like, trust me, I've played hot garbage. I've played Beverly Hills Cop the game. That is hot garbage. Oh wait, I can just leave. I was I was thinking like, oh, this turret section goes goes on for a very long time. What do we got here? A map. Uh, this might be another bonus objective. I saw one thing here. Oh, secret collectible, I guess. What are we doing? Eliminate the enemy prisons in the area. Okay, send the fake message. Not too sure why there was a weapon laying around there, but okay. Now we need... Oh, go to next station.
Eliminate the enemy prisoners of the area. We'll do. Oh, oh. Oh no! They killed our friends. Bastards. I will drink Yankee blood. Oh lord. Final one. Oh my god, I cannot believe I got both of them while strafing. Uh, okay. Let's blow up the uh, train right here. And that's already that. So the missions are pretty short. It's pretty good pace. Naval warfare was yet another source of punishment used by both North and South to crush its foe. Shells from nearby gunboats pounded cities under siege, and naval battles on sea and on rivers raged between the Union and the fledgling Southern Navy. The ironclad became the most feared of all warships. Driven by steam, they got their name from the skin of metal encasing their wooden hulls. They fired deadly explosive shells that could destroy entire buildings with one blast. At the first light of dawn, April 29, 1863, Union ironclad ships moved down the Mississippi to attack the fortress of Grand Gulf. Under the command of Rear Admiral Porter, the ships made an all-out assault against these mighty bulwarks, completely cutting off Pittsburgh, making her ripe for the taking. Listen up, men! The Grand Gulf Fortress is our target. It's heavily defended even against monsters like these. We'll first attack the lower defenses, then the ones above. If we meet heavy resistance, we will retreat. The fortress is not worth a great loss of blood. To your guns! We're closing on the top. Okay, so this mission Everybody is the ready. only mission in the game that is absolute garbage. This mission sucks. It plays terrible. So we need to destroy certain buildings that are flickering red. And in the beginning, it's not that big of a deal. But some of the buildings are in such a weird position where the angle is very difficult to, uh, to get. And it's very slow, and you basically only get two tries to do it. And if you don't get it, you fail the mission. Um, one thing that I would like to find out is maybe if I can already destroy some of the buildings that are not flickering red yet. That church over there is actually one of the buildings that will flicker red, but it's... Oh, yeah, oh, there you go. You can actually do that. Hmm. Interesting. Not too sure which of the other buildings will turn red. Not that one, apparently. Oh, yep, there we go. Okay, only one left. Great, great, great. Which one? I think it's somewhere there. But the good thing is, we destroyed all the buildings except for one. Let's see if we can get that final one then as well. Super thing is, we now have to wait for it to turn. There's nothing really we can do in the meantime. Like, I appreciate them trying something different, you know, trying to give you a turret section on a boat. It's not that great, though. Okay, it's there. It's all... Again, from this angle, almost impossible. It's so difficult. I don't even know. 
how far they go. Trying to look for explosives. Okay, that's way too, way too close. Oh, well, that's actually too far. We are in range. Not now at an angle where I cannot hit it. Okay, final run. So again, you uh, you don't get it now. You're screwed. And you have to do the whole thing over again. Oh my god, we got it. This level's a nightmare. Let's fire at the cannons. Hey, we got promoted. Alright, and this is the final level of the Confederacy. We will now switch to the Union. And it's time for us to kill some rebels. Boom. Well, that's a very long outro. <laughs> Not a whole lot is happening. Jackson was not only the capital of Mississippi, but also a major manufacturing center, supplying the South with much needed materials of war. Two corps from the Union Army under General Sherman and McPherson marched against Jackson, intending to cut off the city and its railroads from Vicksburg. Southern General Joseph Johnston was ordered by the Secretary of War to proceed at once to Mississippi and take command of all forces in the field the Mississippi capital must not fall into enemy hands. Before an all-out attack commenced, the Union made an unexpected move. A small group of elite soldiers were dispatched to weaken the defenses of the city and create a diversion for the coming onslaught. Edward Hogger, is it? I've heard good things about you. You're a member of Captain Blazer's scouts. I need a man who's an excellent shot and can infiltrate enemy territory. Report to Sergeant McKinley. He'll tell you what to do. And son, don't disappoint. I won't, sir. Every one of you boys was chosen by the old man for a critical mission. This city is our target. It's being used as a supply line for the whole area. Don't fool yourselves into thinking this will be easy. The place is swarming with rebs, and it's heavily defended. That said, we're gonna go in, blow up our targets, and get out of there. Let's do it. All right, fighting now for the other side, the Union. Here we go. Let's kill some Rebs. And then once more, a uh, group of elite soldiers. I think more uh, war games should actually tell the perspective from uh, both sides. I know Viet Cong 2 has a short section where you play as the Vietnamese. Oh my goodness, okay. Or you'll be 
Another urban combat mission, by the way. You know, having your squad follow you all makes it feel all the more like Call of Duty. Is this is where we're going. Oh, ooh, nice find. Oh, Gatling gun time. Take this, you rebel sons of bitches! For the United States of America! For, <laughs> for Abe Lincoln, honest Abe. Oh my god, okay. I love their uh, ragdolls when I hit them while they're running. Who's left? Over here. I need help. Oh, looks like these are the ones we need to destroy. First, need to eliminate the enemy presence. Hi there. Okay. Fire in the hole. The explosions themselves also look nice. It's nice particle effects. All right. Got a lot of explosives here. There we go. Double barreled shotgun. Mm. Look at that. Very nice. Gotta get a little bit up close and personal to use that. This reb obliges. Very nice. Not the best weapon, of course, to use in that frantic uh, chaos. Destroy the artillery cannons. Got it. Defend the position. Oh! Oh, shit. Oh, my God. They're everywhere. Rebs are counter-charging. Where's my friendly uh, NPCs here? I need some backup. Let's do a reload here. Oh! Send him flying. Okay, any more? Wow, okay, you redeemed yourself. The South as well as the North used secret agents and saboteurs to gather intelligence and destroy important targets. There were none better than Sheridan scouts, Union spies who often posed as Confederate soldiers to carry out their missions. Being exposed was costly as wearing the wrong uniform was considered an act of espionage, punishable by death. 
The war approaches its bloody end, with the southern capital now encircled by Union troops. General Grant orders Sheridan scouts to seize Lynchburg, destroying all military depots and munitions in the area. This will sever all communication and supply links from the besieged cities of Richmond and Petersburg with the Shenandoah Valley. If the mission succeeds, it will pave the way for a northern victory. Man, the general's counting on us. Stone wall right at the ridge. Our job is to infiltrate their lines, blow up some cannons, and try not to get killed. Any questions? Good. Let's move. Let's move out. We're at the end of the war. Protect your companions until they reach the enemy position. Got it. So I gotta provide overwatch. We got here. Oh, there they are on the ridge. It's one down. Come on, boys. You take care of the guys that are on the floor here. actually got him. The gunplay in this game is pretty good. It's, uh, I prefer it over games like Darkest of Days. Shotgun is not going to be very, uh, useful. A saber? Huh. I won't lie. Part of me kind of wants to try and use it, but <laughs> that seems like suicide. I'm always fascinated with how weapons technology has in, uh, improved at the end of the war compared to the beginning. You can see that clearly with uh, wars like World War One and World War Two. The weapons they use and the armor are uh, vastly different at the beginning and end. I like the way you shoot. Oh! Use their own weapons against them. Oh, Jesus. They spawned in behind us. There we go. Don't move or you'll be killed. It's fine. Don't worry about it. I guess we actually do have to destroy them before we can breach through. In that case, have a grenade. Not able to use the weapon until I'm done reloading. Are we ready yet? Oh, I thought this was a barricade. We got two explosives left. Not a whole lot. Ugh. Oh, a lot more incoming. They might just spawn in until the artillery is destroyed. Oh, it's a picture. Well, not really what I was looking for, but hey. <laughs> Here come my 
fellow NPCs. Completely ignoring the Rebs. I see actually there's a thing in here. Give me that. Very nice. Okay, destroy the last artillery. Almost there. Two. Oh, that's another picture. So many pictures in this mission. Hey, we got Lieutenant. Another skill point. Oh, God. It's one down. Two down. Oh. Oh, boys. Got something for you, Reb bastards. Oh, look at him fly. Richard Blazer was 32 years old when the war began, with few impressive credentials and no military experience. Despite his unimpressive background, he quickly rose to prominence in General Grant's army. Blazer was sloppy in his military dress and drilled his men haphazardly. Nevertheless, by the spring of 1864, Blazer and his men had already participated in a number of daring raids. In May of that year, Union forces under the command of George Crook were intent on destroying the Virginia and Tennessee Railroad. A diversion was needed to fool the enemy into thinking the attack would come elsewhere. Blazer's elite command snuck into Lewisburg at night their mission was to sabotage as many artillery positions as they could find. It was critical they make the enemy believe this was the target of the enemy attack. There's no turning back now, men. The Army of the Tennessee is about to punch through Pemberton's lines and send a message to the whole Confederate Army. While he's distracted, General Grant wants to find that Rep spy and get back some important documents. Last we heard, he was holed up somewhere near the council. Now let's move! Oh, one more thing, man. Yesterday, our spies in Richmond learned that Pemberton was able to send a message out of the city. We need to find the source of the communication and stop it. Permanently. It's vital that we retrieve those documents. If we fail, many of our men out there will pay in blood for this. Show no mercy, because no mercy will be granted to you. Watch out! Move! Oh, we won't show them no mercy. Boom! God, I love the ragdoll physics in this game. Oh! It's like D-Day. Yeah, man, I'm not lying. I really, really like this game. The gunplay is so fun. It's such a unique setting. Oh, Jesus. I'm glad you're here. Come on, you can do it. Kill that Johnny Reb. Any day now. Right, helped him out. Like the Pacific War one is also good. Pacific uh, uh, the other Civil War game also good, there but there are more things wrong with that Don't one. Again, the only thing that people might find annoying with this is the realism. Hold on and take cover. 
I guess in a way it can more be seen like a Hollywood blockbuster um, with some elements of realism in it. I already tossed a grenade over there. Don't you worry. Alright, we gotta take care of that communication here. Okay, that's the only only good reb is a dead reb. Oh, what we got here? We got oh Jesus, a weapon. Can use this bad boy. All right, up and over. See if we can snag a different weapon. Like the layout of this level, right? Like the urban warfare. It, it could it could be straight up a uh, Call of Duty game or Call of Duty level. It's very varied. It's full. This feels like a place where people have lived in. Ooh, that looks like a perfect opportunity for some grenades. I don't have any. You would think there would be. Some lying somewhere, but we'll just have to do it the old school way. Oh, here we go. Oh, it's your unlucky day now, Rebs. Oh, what? What? They are everywhere. Oh my god, what? Oh, they're outside. They're up there, too? My goodness, they're like cockroaches. Oh, nice shot, NPC. There we go. Okay, let's go over here. Ah, uh, this looks like an open space as well. Ooh, the graveyard. It's nothing holy anymore. I hear a Gatling gun. Oh! That bounced off one someone's grave. Stolen documents. Uh, where are the stolen documents? <laughs> Maybe I needed to, to, to kill more uh, units. Yeah, that seemed to do it. That's it. We have the documents. Now comes the hard part. We need to get this information back to the general. Let's go.
Union troops were in high spirits despite their first unsuccessful and bloody attack against Vicksburg on May 19, 1863. When General Grant passed, a soldier referred to him with admiration as hardtack. Soon all Union troops nearby were yelling, hardtack, hardtack, in honor of their tough commander. Union cooks joined in when they served the troops hardtack, beans, and coffee the evening of May 21. That night, Union forces pounded their target with 220 artillery pieces and naval gunfire. The next morning, Vicksburg was again shelled before the Union advanced along a three-mile front. At the harbor, a select group of soldiers prepared their assault on the weakest points of the city. This mission was designed to soften Vicksburg's defenses and lay the groundwork for a final Union victory. All Listen right, up. people, welcome to we the final level. It says the Redan, which protects the city, has been damaged, and the Rebs are moving in to repair it. Our orders are to destroy the barricade completely so that we can move our troops in. Let's move in. Soldier, you've proven that you're an excellent marksman. Be ready. If you see any sharpshooter in the area, make sure he regrets the day he was born. Will do. Destroy the barricade on the road. And it's another urban combat. The other Civil War game only has one urban uh, level. A grenade over there. Nah, it's only one enemy. I won't waste a grenade on that. There we go. This seems, seems more like it, where a grenade could do some damage here. I don't know what blew up, and it wasn't something I threw, but hey. Beautiful. We got one grenade left. Somebody dust and explosions. Oh, where we're we heading. Ready. I hear a Gatling gun. That's not good. What's my other? Okay, no sniper. So we gotta be a bit careful here. Let's move from cover to cover. Yeah, I don't have any. Trust me, if I ha if I had, I would. Oh. oh, I saw a box. I saw something red somewhere. There we go. Very nice. Oh, Jesus. Oh, wait, what? Oh, up there. Something wrong here. Oh, is that boat? Okay, that's bonus. Fernando Torres, dead or alive. 
Eighteen hundred dollars? That is a lot for that time. Oh my goodness. Are you then like set for life if you have that money? Like you'll be good for a month if you have that here. Nowadays. So just imagine what that was back in that day. Alright, let's finish this. Alright people, that was it. That was the final mission. I hope you guys liked it, as I said. Uh, I actually like this game very much. Um, I like it more than just a B game. I actually would really recommend this. It's a very unique setting. Uh, satisfying gameplay. I like this a lot. It's the best uh, game created by the History Channel, in my opinion. Anyway, as always, let me know any uh, requests or suggestions of games that you want to see on the channel. Uh, any real hidden gems are always welcome. Please also don't forget to head on over to my uh, long play channel, The Game Archivist, and subscribe if you like what you see. It really helps me out a lot, and I'm very, very thankful if you do so. Anyway, guys, thanks so much for watching, and I'll see you guys next time.